Canby. We will pick up the action in round five. John Meekins with this right hand right at the end of the fourth round shook Sal Mamby, followed up with another good left hook and uh, had him hurt for the first time in the bout. Yes, he did. It was a good finish to that round. Just the last five seconds, actually, by Meekins. Well, Sal Mamby is, is clearly not what he was when he was champion. It would be silly to expect him to be at the age of 41. He did have the good win against Glenwood Brown, but... Right here, he looks every bit of 41 as a boxer. Take a look at your scorecard. You got a shutout. Yeah, and I, I really think it's going to end up being academic because I think those left hooks are starting to really cave Mambi in. And if Deacons continues that and goes to the body, he'll he'll make an end of things here. He knows that. You can see, he senses that. Deacons in superb condition, incidentally. Again, he's hardly even breathing heavy in his corner. And with John, you never know. There have been times when he has not uh, been in the best of condition for bouts. Good left hand there on the way in. He actually missed with the right, but got a good left hand in short quarters. Meekins is quick. Uh, he is quick, quicker with his punches tonight than I've seen him in a while. Bring on. He seems to be fighting a carefully controlled fight, actually. He's not wasting any punches, as we've said. It looks like he's got an awful lot left. That was a big left hand right there, too. It's characteristic of Meekins. I mean, that is his modus operandi. And uh, you know, now, especially, he feels like he can take Mamby out if he lands a couple of good shots. But, but he has to be careful not to just be looking for the one shot. He should keep his concentration on throwing a series of punches. Looks down here at us. It's true. He's been looking around the last... 15, 20 seconds, like he lost something in the audience. It's a dangerous thing to do. Looks like he's lost a little concentration through that. Well, he feels in control in there, and he probably is. Bobby just took a big gulp of air, I think. Tank is running a little dry on Saul Mambi. He's taking some big shots in this bout. And as we've acknowledged, John Meekins is a very good puncher. Well, Meekins has beaten many of the current generation of junior welterweights. Now he's beating one from the past. And I think the next step for him is to try and get a title shot. Well, there was a big right hand, and that really hurt Mamby. Mamby still hurt. That was a great shot there toward the end of the round. Meekins has been finishing almost every round solidly. We're in the corner of Saul Mamby. You stay cool, throw your punches right under the chin. Understand? I want you to come under and close with some punches. All right? I don't want you to... You got to meet him with a right hand. You got to meet him with a right hand as he's coming into you. Drop that shoulder on him. You understand? Just stand on that right foot and let it go. All right, give me that. Give me the best thing. All right? Yeah, give me that. Well, the face of Saul Mamby, not a pleasant sight for him so far. This is what he's been seeing, the right uppercut on the inside by Meekins, and then this right hand that really stunned Mambi. For Saul, I, at this point, he's he's in a pretty desperate situation. Here's an example. Even when Meekins misses with the jab, look what it sets up, the right hand. So even a jab that misses by Meekins can help him. And in Meekins' corner, they were telling him, get mean, get mean. It's the last round. And Meekins starts out up tempo here. And takes a shot. Knocked off balance by that left hook, not a knockdown. No, Sal Mamby says, if I'm ever going to let it hang out here, if I'm ever going to go for the knockout, it's going to be it. Because this could be, without being dramatic, this could be his this could be his last round of boxing. He's down by nine points in this match. And at 41, a loss, could send you in retirement. Beacons with a good left hand, the best punch of that flurry by both men. 
And because he's taking more chances, Mombi's being hit more. Mombi's left eye almost closed here. A lot of swelling. He's, he's hurting right now. He had to open up. He had to take chances, which he doesn't want to do. He's not that kind of boxer normally. And because of it, he paid for it in this round. He really has gotten nailed with some very big shots. And unless something wild would happen here, and unless uh, something strange would happen after the fight, this, this could be the last time you're going to see Solomon be in a ring. And he was a great super lightweight champion in his day. Yeah, he's a guy, too, who well-spoken, guy who has got as much as the sport can give and has given a lot to the sport, and I'm sure he realizes he is one guy I really do feel could step out. Well, hopefully, although he came back in at a very, very advanced age for a boxer. Right now, Meekins is just taking him apart here in this 10th round. Boy, look at those jabs by Meekins. They're so strong in the right to the body. Really effective when he uses it. Well, nothing should happen to John Meekins' top 10 rating. He's protected that tonight for sure with this win and you now biding his time. And Salmambi will finish yet another fight on his feet. Never been off. And that's it. And magically, we are back in San Antonio where we have watched Orlando Canizales dispose of Jimmy Navarro in about a half a round, minute and a half into the first round, and that was all over, but it doesn't get any easier for him. He gets Frankie Duarte, and that's tough. No, he, he, he does get a tough man to try and uh, defend his title against the second time. And uh, the thing about Frankie Duarte is he's got a very good chin, which, of course, uh, Ken Azales wasn't facing tonight. And Frankie Duarte can punch. And that could be one of the best fights of the year because neither of those men will be moving around that much. And it'll be a war in the trenches. And uh, probably the biggest problem for Frankie Duarte is going to be the fact that he cuts so much. This young man, Orlando Canizales, can punch and hit you a lot. And finally, Harold Rhodes, a guy who you have an idea. We've been talking about people we're going to see more of. Certainly, we'll see more of him. Impressive tonight. Harold Rhodes performed very, very well in beating Ralph Reyes because Reyes was a good puncher. Harold Rhodes, could, I think, could be about a year away from facing a top contender. Quick knockouts, the story of the night here at Freeman uh, Coliseum here in San Antonio. For us, just about a wrap. For Al Bernstein, I'm Barry Tompkins, and we will see you next week. New York looking for a name boxer to go along with Mark Breland. But uh, Dixon will be a tough one. Meekins, though, has the experience. And Al Bernstein profiles the career of John Wesley Meekins. At 22, with three and a half years of pro experience, John Meekins is already a veteran. He's hoping now to be more than that, a champion. This New Yorker has carved out 16 wins using a wide variety of punches against the likes of Sergio Aguirre. There are uppercuts, hooks, and jabs, and they come at opponents 